Thank you. And uh, thank uh, uh, Alexei for the invitation to give this talk. Uh, it's nice to uh, talk about some mathematics uh, with the people in, in St. Petersburg. So um, I will talk about uh, the Gerson complex and our real schemes. Um, the main theme of this talk is uh, duality in algebraic geometry, uh, as well as in motivic homotopy. So this is a joint work with uh, Han Chie. So uh, first I will discuss um, the, some dualities in algebraic geometry, and then we will see the vid groups and uh, real schemes or um, in literature, they are called real spectra, but I call them uh, real schemes. And uh, at the end, we will see the link between uh, a sort of uh, Gerstmann complex and duality. So let's start uh, with a Grothendieck Cohen duality. So throughout the talk, we assume that all schemes are in a theory of a finite dimension. So the Cohen duality is uh, introduced by Grothendieck in 1963. So um, as in the lecture notes written by uh, Hartshorn, um, called, the, the book is co called The uh, Residues and Duality. So coherent duality is, um, is a generalization of Sayer duality. So here is a short uh, comparison between the two. So Sayer duality holds over regular schemes essentially, or more generally for Cohen Macaulay schemes, while uh, coherent duality holds for singular schemes. So uh, Sayer duality involves uh, sheaves and the notion of a dualizing sheaf, while coherent duality makes use of complexes of sheaves and the notion of dualizing complex. And also uh, uh, in his coherent duality, Grothendieck adapts the relative point of view, so the classical uh, algebraic geometry, what corresponds to uh, projective varieties are replaced by programmorphisms. And coherent duality is historically the first of the duality theories and is a prototype for several other duality theories, which we are going to see now. So the other dualities include et al. duality, which uh, uh, fully work, worked out in SJ four and five, but also um, in topology, what is called the Verdier duality, uh, introduced um, uh, shortly after the et al. one in 1966, which is based on the work of Bora and Moore in, in this 1960. And more recently, uh, the theory of A1 homotopic duality introduced after Morel Wojewski and uh, the work of Ayub and Szynski Degliz around the, uh, the year 2000. So here is a short table comparing different duality theories uh, and the space spaces they are working on. So for each duality, there is a category of spaces and there is a category of sheaves. So the coherent duality holds for schemes, so Nasserian schemes of finite dimension. And uh, we look at the bounded derived category of quasi-coherent sheaves with coherent cohomology. While uh, in Ital duality, we also work with schemes and we look at the bounded derived category of Ital sheaves on X with uh, coefficients uh, lambda, which is in general assumed to be torsion uh, of torsion, uh, which is invertible on X. And Verdieu duality, uh, so it works for locally compact uh, topological spaces. And the category is, we look at is the bounded derived category of sheaves on X with integral coefficients. And um, the A1 homotopic duality uh, also works for schemes. And the category we're looking at are motivic categories, such as the stable motivic uh, homotopic category or uh, the category of mixed motives. And the duality theorems in these duality theories can actually be expressed in terms of the Grothendieck six functors formalism. 
And it turns out that, so we know that coherent duality is a kind of prototype for the, 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 the three other dualities uh, here. But there is there are some major differences between coherent duality and the other duality theories here. So uh, right, so the six functors um, so f upper star r f lower star r f lower shrink f upper shrink uh, the derived tensor product and the derived internal home functors. So they satisfy a number of uh, axioms uh, and relations between them that uh, axiomite um, uh, main theorems such as duality or uh, projection formulas. I mean, I don't want to state the, the relation between uh, the, the four relations between those functors, uh, but let's as first compare um, similarities between those dualities. So uh, these um, somehow both hold in coherent duality and, um, and the other ones. So first you have Poincaré duality, which states that for a smooth morphism F, um, the functor F upper shrink differs from F upper star by uh, what is called an orientation sheet. So this is, uh, can be considered as a local system of rank one. So it is a tensor invertible object. Uh, for example, in etat homology, it's just D, um, D to D, where D is the relative dimension of F. And uh, in Verbier duality, it's exactly the orientation shift after a, after a shift. Um, but also we have um, a tier duality. So if so, it says that the functor R F lower star for as F a smooth and proper morphism. So the functor R F lower star preserves dualizable objects. So basically, it says that if you have a, a, a smooth and proper morphism then our F lower star of a local system is remains to be a local system. I mean, the, the, the cohomology sheaves are locally constant. Uh, right. And also we have the notion of uh, dualizing objects and the uh, local duality or bi-duality. So um, we know that um, two dualizing objects on a given space or scheme they actually, they always differ by a tensor invertible object to a shift. And uh, dualizing objects are preserved by the functor F upper shrink. For example, the dualizing complexes in, in coherent duality, they are dualizing objects. And similarly for, uh, for the Etau context. And now we uh, come to the differences between coherent and Etau or motivic dualities. So for, uh, the first of the differences uh, lies in base chain theorems. So in coherent duality, there are very general base change theorems, for example, flat base change. While in other dualities, you only, basically only have smooth base change, for example, in uh, uh, for tau sheaves. And um, they're, they're in general false uh, if the morphism is not smooth. And the second point is purity. So the purity, what is called the purity, so it compares the functor I upper star and I upper shrink for I a regular closed immersion. So uh, coherent has coherent duality has really nice uh, notion of purity, uh, which is classically called the fundamental local isomorphism. So it says that if I is a regular closed immersion, then uh, I upper star if you tensor it with uh, the inverse of the determinant of the normal bundle of I, so this is a, this is a, a, a line bundle, then this is I isomorphic to this I upper shrink. Uh, but this definitely fails for, uh, for a tau sheaves. Um, so in our joint work with Biglis and Khan, we constructed uh, what is called the purity transformation so if I is a regular closed immersion, then there is a natural transformation of functors from I upper star of something tensored with the Tom space of the uh, normal bundle of I uh, um, to the minus one. So it's this, uh, the inverse of it to uh, this I upper shrink. And this is not an isomorphism in general. 
And for example, the, the Grothendieck uh, absolute purity conjecture says that this is an isomorphism when I is a regular closed immersion between regular schemes and when you apply this to, uh, to a dualizable object. So it suffices to, do, uh, to apply this to the unit object. Uh, right, so this is the second difference between coherent duality and the other dualities. Uh, and the last point um, I want to say is that uh, the functor RF lower shrink does, does not exist in coherent duality. So in general, the functor RF lower star does not preserve coherence. And uh, the projection formula in, in this context be becomes the following, the, the following one. So if F is proper, then R F lower star, um, R internal harm, F, F upper shrink G, this is isomorphic to R harm of R F lower star F G. And also in coherent duality, there is no suitable subcategory of constructible objects preserved by the, the six functors. Well, in the other um, categories, there are suitable notion of constructible objects. So this is a, a, fin a finiteness condition. So, uh, right. So these are some differences between coherent duality and the other dualities. So uh, now let us recall the notion of dualizing complexes in coherent duality. So a coherent dualizing complex uh, over a scheme X so this is a complex uh, K inside the bounded derived category of a quasi-coherent sheaves on X with coherent cohomology, and which is quasi-isomorphic to a bounded complex of injective OX modules. Um, so you have um, a complex like this, which is a quasi-isomorphic to a bounded complex of injective modules, such that, um, the, uh, the bi-duality holds, which means that uh, for any uh, object F in this uh, bounded derived category, um, F is isomorphic to R harm, F, R harm FK with values in K. So this is the local duality. So, uh, so many schemes do have dualizing complexes. For example, X is Gorenstein if and only if OX is a dualizing complex on X. So in particular, if X is regular, then OX is a dualizing complex. And uh, if Y to X is a quasi-projective morphism, and if K is a dualizing complex over X, then um, you can define F upper shriek. So this F, F upper shriek of K is a dualizing complex over Y. So in particular, uh, if X has a, has a dualizing complex, uh, then any scheme which is quasi protective over X also has a dualizing complex. And if you have two dualizing complexes on, a, on the same scheme, then uh, they differ by a line bundle. So if there is a unique uh, integer N and L and an invertible OX module L such that K prime is K tensor with L shifted by N. May I ask uh, you a question? Yes. Yeah, first I must confess that I know very little about uh, dualities. And so in the, in the last uh, statement, is it yes. easy or difficult thing? I mean, to say that it differ by uh, line uh, bundle. So, um... So one direction is easy. So if a K prime looks like this, then K prime is a is a yeah, yeah, uh, yeah this is straightforward. And course, yeah. uh, the other direction, I guess, you need to apply this to. Um, uh, so you need to apply this to uh, the constant object or something. Uh, I don't remember, but the proof is written down in in, in, okay. in Hartron's book. It, it's it's not it's not hard. Okay. It just follows from this uh, by duality. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so, right. And what, what we will be needing um, uh, for this talk is the fact that a dualizing complex carries local information on each point. So, uh, if K, so we assume that K is a dualizing complex on a scheme X. 
and we let small x to be a point in x. So we have uh, the stock of k at x. So this lives in the bounded derived category of the, of the local ring of x at small x. And we denote by pi x the inclusion of the, of the closed point into the local ring. And then uh, this pi x upper shriek of kx of the stock, this is uh, this lives in the bounded derived category of, of the residue field of x. And this is a dualizing complex over the residue field. So this implies that uh, there is a unique integer. So because um, this is a field, k of x is a field. So a dualizing complex over a field is nothing but a, but a vector space, one dimensional vector space up to a shift. So there is a unique integer mu k of x, um, lives in, which links in z, and a one dimensional kx vector space, uh, which I denote by k index k of x, such that um, this uh, pi x upper shift of kx is uh, this one dimensional vector space shifted by minus mu k of x. And it turns out that uh, this map, which uh, to this each point x, this integer mu k of x, this defines a co-dimension function on x. So in particular, a, a scheme with a dualizing complex is universally catenary. Uh, this is because you can apply the function f per shrink and also has a co-dimension function. Um, right. Uh, right, so uh, now let us uh, come to the second point of this talk. So we have the, what is called uh, the triangulated width groups. So uh, if X is a scheme and we look at the A, uh, the, the category of vector bundles over X, or the category of coherent sheets on X. And we define the bounded derived categories um, on A to be uh, the, the category of uh, the bounded, uh, the category of bounded chains up to uh, chain homotopy. And we uh, localize with respect to uh, quasi-isomorphisms. So, uh, well, it's it's the category of coherent sheets is um, uh, it, it's just because the category of fit vector bundles is not an abelian category, but you but still we can deconstruct the 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 derived category just uh, by this construction. So uh, if L is an invertible OX module, uh, this implies that uh, this uh, DB of vector bundles. And if you look at the functor R harm with values uh, in L, so this defines an endo functor of this category. And it turns out that this pair is what is called a triangulated category with duality. So this is a triangulated category and this is a duality functor on it. And similarly, if K is a dualizing complex on X, um, the same, holds for the pair of um, the bounded get derived category of coherent sheaves on X and this are harm with values in K. So this is because K is a dualizing complex on it. So this pair defines a triangulated category with duality. And uh, so there's a general theory of uh, VIT groups for triangulated categories with duality. So we define the VIT group associated to such a category to be, um, we look at the free um, abelian group generated by symmetric spaces and we quotient by uh, the metabolic spaces. So the construction is very similar to the, um, the usual uh, width groups. And we can define the width group of a triangulated category with duality. And in the first case, um, for the bounded category of vector bundles on X, and for duality functor defined by an inver invertible OX module, we, de uh, we define the associated width group, uh, which is called the triangulated width group. So this is uh, WXL. And sim similarly, there is a coherent version uh, for a dualizing complex K on X. 
which is denoted by uh, W tilde X K. So you have triangulated V groups and coherent V groups associated to uh, schemes, uh, invertible OX modules and dualizing complexes. And so we denote by W of X, the V group of X to be uh, the V group of X for the dual uh, for the uh, invertible OX module, which is OX itself. Do you have any assumptions on X at this point? Um, arbitrary um, Nasserian Just schemes? Nasserian. Okay. Nasserian of finite dimension. Uh, right. At some point, we need to assume that X2 is invertible on X, but for the moment, I don't think I need to. Okay. Uh, right. So, and we denote by C X Z over two to be the ring of uh, continuous functions from X um, to Z over two. So this, because Z over two is discrete, this is equivalent to the locally constant functions. And associated to the V group, we have the reduced rank homomorphism uh, from the V group of X to uh, C X uh, Z over two. And the fundamental ideal uh, I of X is defined to be the kernel of the rank homomorphism. And um, there is a canonical map from I. So the J, I J of X is the J's power of uh, the fundamental ideal. So the canonical map from I to the J of X to uh, I to the J plus one of X induced by the multiplication by two. So this map induces a sequence of maps from W of X, which is I to the zero of X to I one of X to I two of X, et cetera, until um, I infinity of X, which is the co-limit of this uh, IJ of X. And if we invert to all these maps are isomorphism, so, um, the two inverted bit groups um, is isomorphic to I, the two inverted fundamental ideal, et cetera, until I infinity. And um, the width sheaf is the underlying W is the sheaf associated to the pre sheaf that sends U to W of U. And similarly, we can define um, the IJ sheaf and the I infinity sheaf. And if uh, J is greater or equal to the dimension of X plus one, then uh, this map is an isomorphism uh, starting from J equals um, one plus the dimension of X. So this uh, sequence actually um, already stabilizes at a finite range. Mm. Is it true? I mean, suppose that X is a field. I mean, I know the field of say uh, real numbers, right? Yes. Then W is uh, just Z, yeah, mm -hmm. given by signature. The mm -hmm. fundamental ideal is generated by two in this integers. Yeah, and I mean, the sequence doesn't stabilize oh. at all. Ah, it right. has a 2z, 4z, 8z, right. and so on. I think it's it's the cohomology that stabilizes from there. Is mm. that true, I think? Mm. No, no. I think it stabilizes from real. Mm. Um. Um, well, I, I found this statement anyway for the um, for the IJ cohomology um, in uh, in the paper of Jacobson. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there is definitely something around this, but I, I don't remember the precise statement. Uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, I think that you're right. Sorry. 
but uh, I, I think we don't need this for, uh, for what follows anyway. Sorry. So um, can I continue? Uh, no, you're probably right. I mean, uh, what is what is the isomorphism that you want to have? I mean, this map is multiplication by two, right? Yes. Ah, yeah. Then, then, then it, it, it should be okay, right? Yeah. I mean, for the real, yes. for the field, it is okay, right? It is precisely this multiplication by two is an isomorphism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry for the confusion. So yeah, everything seems to be okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, right. Um, and now I would define uh, the real schemes or the real spectrum, uh, um, sometimes called in the literature. So the real spectrum of, uh, of a ring A, so this is a topological space a denoted uh, spare of A. So um, as I said, um, this is uh, given by uh, the pairs uh, the p like this and big p where uh, this p is a prime ideal in a so it's a point in spec of a and big p is an ordering on the residue field um, of p so you, you, you look at all pairs of uh, points in spec a and orderings on the residue field and the topology on this uh, topological space is generated by opens um, for uh, of the following form, so for small n big A, um, you define D of A to be um, um, the elements in spare of, of A such that A uh, of um, psi is uh, positive. So it means that A, the image of A inside the residue field is positive for the ordering P. So this is top, a topological space uh, called the real spectrum. And for a scheme uh, X, you can glue the real sp spectra of the, of the rings to get, uh, to get a topological space, uh, which I call the real scheme uh, XR. So this is uh, obtained by gluing this, uh, these real spectra of rings. So uh, as a set, it's given by um, the set of pairs XP, where X is a point in X and P is an ordering on the, the residue field. So um, it turns out that the, the topology on this XR is, um, is quite weird. So if uh, X is a quasi-compact, quasi-separated scheme, then XR is um, a spectral space. So um, according to a theorem of Hofstra, a topological space is a a spectral space, if and only if, as is homo homeomorphic to as the risky spectrum. Um, so it's a spectrum of a ring, if and only if uh, uh, S is uh, a limit of finite T0 spaces. So XR, is, it looks like a Zariski uh, spectrum. So in particular, the topology is not Hausdorff. Uh, but still the space is uh, quasi-compact and uh, quasi-separated. And XR uh, depends functorially on the scheme X. So if F is a uh, morphism from X to Y, then you have a um, continuous map FR from XR to YR. And um, the, the real schemes or real spectra, they are important in, uh, in real algebraic geometry in the following sense. So um, you have, there's a canonical notion of constructible subsets of the, of the real spectra. So uh, for in the affine case, for the real spectrum of a ring, they are Boolean combinations of the DAs. So which means that you take, uh, you can take finite unions, finite intersections and uh, complements. So they are generated by uh, DAs under these operations. And uh, the constructible subsets of uh, XR for X uh, scheme are uh, exactly the, the subsets such that the intersection with, uh, with spare A is constructible in 
uh, in spare A for any affine uh, open cover of, uh, of X. So there's a natural notion of constructible subsets. And for example, X, if X is, a, is separated a finite type over the real numbers R, then the constructible subsets of XR are, are precisely the semi-algebraic subsets of the real points of X. Uh, right, so the notion of uh, real spectra or real schemes, they allow us to define um, the real etal site, which is introduced by Scheiderer. So uh, the real etal site expressed is the category of um, etal X schemes and we endow this category with the Grotendieck topology where the covering families are, are, are families such that uh, they induce a surjection on um, the corresponding real schemes. So uh, to compare with the etal topology, etal topology is uh, the category of uh, etal X schemes endowed with the Grotendieck topologies uh, where the covering families are uh, exactly the surjective values. So um, the study of uh, such uh, growth and sites originates from um, the relations between etal homology with set over two coefficients and orderings of residue fields, um, which started by a Dylan, Parimala, uh, Costa Roy, and Scheiderer among other people. So the real etal topology is finer than the Nisnevich topology, but it cannot be compared with uh, the etal topology. And a, a fundamental theorem in real algebraic geometry due to Kost, Roy, and Scheiderer states that there is a canonical equivalence of sites between um, XR, which is topological space that we view as a, as a Grotendieck site, uh, so this is canonically equivalent to the real etal site over X. So now uh, here comes the Jacobson's theorem, which uh, establishes a link between vid groups and um, the real schemes. So first we have a global signature map from the vid group to the ring of continuous functions uh, from XR to Z. Uh, that sends um, a class phi, which is uh, an element in, in the width group of X, to uh, this map, which sends uh, a pair XP to uh, the signature at this ordering P of this uh, IX upper star phi. So, it's, uh, it, so this is uh, the quadratic form um, at this point X, and you look at the signature uh, under this ordering P. So, um, and Jacobson, Jacobson's theorem uh, states the following thing. So if two is invertible on X, then the, the, the global signature map induces an isomorphism of real tau sheaves between um, the I infinity sheaf and the constant sheaf on XR. So this, we view this as a real etal sheaf. So in particular, if you invert two, then uh, the, the two inverted vid sheaf is isomorphic to uh, Z one over two uh, real constant sheaf on uh, the real etal site. And um, let me sketch, uh, give a sketch of the proof. So the, the proof of uh, Jacobson's theorem basically reduces to uh, the case of local rings. And then uh, he uses a um, hopeless trick to reduce um, the proof to the case of fields. And then in the case of fields, this is basically a theorem due to Arison and Klimbusch. So this is Jacobson's theorem relating the real schemes and the vid groups. And uh, recently Jacobson's theorem can be extended to uh, the twist setting. So instead of the constant sheaf here, we have a twist and we also have a twist here. So uh, that requires uh, introducing uh, the notion of twisting by invertible sheaves. So the definition is quite general. So X, if X OX is a ring space, 
um, L is an invertible OX module and uh, F is a sheaf on X with an action of uh, OX, OX cross. And then we define FL. So this is, uh, um, we view this as F twisted by L. So we define this as a sheafification of uh, this uh, pre sheaf that sends U to FU tensored uh, over um, the free abelian group generated by uh, the invertible sections on U uh, with the free abelian group generated by uh, the invertible elements in uh, and the sections of L over U. So uh, if you have a trivialization of L, then this induces an isomorphism uh, between F of L and F. And in particular, because an invertible OX module is locally trivial, so this always holds locally. So this F of L is locally isomorphic to F. And globally, it's an it's F twisted by some uh, L. And similarly, we can define uh, Z of XR of L. So we can twist this by L. So this is a locally constant sheaf on this um, XR. So, um, so Jacobson's theorem can actually be extended to this uh, twisted uh, context. So this is a theorem due to uh, Hon Bosto, Rent, Shear, and Zebrovius. So it says that there are canonical isomorphisms. Of, uh, so the first one is the I infinity sheaf, but here the argument uh, is, so you look at the vid group with duality defined by this uh, invertible OX module L. So this is the first one. And second one, you look at the I infinity sheaf twisted by L. So this is the, is the twist defined here. So first they show that um, twist, twist. So if you change the duality in uh, vid groups, it's the same as you twist by this L. And secondly, this uh, I infinity sheaf twisted by L, this is the same as uh, this Z uh, XR twisted by L. And can you, comment, yeah, can you yes. comment a little bit on the first yes. thing? Yes. How do you define it? I mean, you take the V group with L duality yes. and uh, take fundamental idea there and- yes. And you shift it by. Yeah, and then you take these powers. Yeah. Which one? I mean, I mean, when you take uh, two ah. elements in L twisted guys, you get an element in L squared twisted yes, guy. Yes. Right? Uh, sorry. So this um, you define I infinity of this to be um, uh, to be I. So um, you define this. So first you have W of this thing twisted by L, yeah. and you take the 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 product with I uh, I I pow the powers of I. Without L, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Sorry for this. Um, yeah, I noticed. Yes, and they show that um, it's the if you change duality in with groups, it's the same as the twisting here. Um, is this okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So they show that um, the three things are the same um, here here and uh, and the twisting one right so uh this establish uh, this is a delicious uh, relation between twisted with sheaves and uh, the twisted constant sheaves on uh, on xr uh right so and on the other hand there is an intrinsic relation between uh, the real schemes and the real entire topology uh, related to um, the motivic homotopy. So this is a deep re result of uh, Tom Bachmann. So he, the theorem of Bachmann states that there is a canonical equ equivalence between the, um, the derived category of sheaves on XR, sheaf of, sheaves of abelian groups, with um, the DA1 of X and you take the row uh, localization. So here, DA1 is the A1 derived category of X. 
So this uh, A1 derived category is obtained from, uh, you'd look at the category of, of pre sheaves uh, over the site of smooth schemes over X uh, with values in the complexes of abelian groups. So, pre, so it's the category of pre sheaves, uh, pre -sheaves of uh, complexes and you apply the Nisnevich A1 localization and P1 stabilization. So this gives you the A1 derived category. And this row is mapped from, uh, from the constant sheet to GM induced by minus one. So Bachmann's theorem states that uh, the two categories are equivalent if you, uh, if you invert row. And in particular, uh, due to this theorem, uh, if you look at the functor that associates uh, uh, to a scheme X, the derived category of sheets on XR. So this is a motivic category and it satisfies the six functors formalism. Uh, so this is a consequence because uh, you have the six functors here on the A1. And it's a general uh, fact uh, that on motivic categories, there's a good notion of constructible objects. So DC of XR, of, this is the full subcategory of constructible objects. So this is the six subcategory generated by uh, objects of the form RF lower shrink, F upper shrink of the constant sheaf for uh, Y, for F as smooth morphism from Y to X. So this, uh, this is a good notion of constructible objects. And uh, one of my recent theorems um, gives a, a more concrete uh, identifications of uh, constructible objects in this category. So, uh, and a, a, a complex of sheaves in uh, the FXR is constructible if I'm a, only if, uh, there is a finite stratification of XR into constructible subsets XI, such that uh, the restriction of uh, this complex onto each uh, structure is constant with perfect stocks. So this is uh, this uh, result is similar to the to the definition in tau cohomology. So you know that um, a, a, a derived uh, a complex. So a bounded uh, complex of etal sheaves is constructible by definition if there is a finite certification to uh, constructible subsets. So here in the algebraic sense, such that the restriction of the complex into each, uh, uh, onto each stratum is locally constant with perfect stocks. So here is just the, the real etal version of, the, of this, uh, this result. So, um, and, and associated to these data, uh, we have um, what is called the Gerson bit complex. So if K is a dualizing complex, so a coherent dualizing complex on a scheme X, and then we can define the Gerson bit complex. So it was uh, originally def defined by Gile, uh, but uh, you know, a joint work with uh, Han Xie and also independently by in, in the thesis of Plowman, uh, we defined this uh, complex of this form. So, so you take the direct sum for new k of x. So this is a co-dimension x. Uh, this is a co-dimension function associated to the dualizing complex on x. So the direct sum for points uh, of co-dimension n of the width groups k of x. So this is the residue field and you take big k of uh, small k of x. So this, uh, as we have defined before, this is a one dimensional k uh, x vector space. So we can define this uh, twisted width group. And uh, you can increase the co-dimension. So co-dimension equals n plus one, and there's a boundary map and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this defines a bounded complex of uh, abelian groups. Is a delta, I mean, is the differential a canonical one or does it depend on um, there are several local choices? There are several choices, but they're all equivalent. So there are several ways to construct boundary maps. 
So first, um, there is a way to define this boundary map using the properties of the, of the VIT groups. So you can define this via the filtration by co-dimensional support on this uh, bounded derived category of the quasi-cohen sheaves on X with cohen cohomology. So this this is the boundary map defined using uh, using the, the 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 properties of bit groups and duality. So this is uh, basically done by uh, Barma and Walter. And also you can define this using the uh, Ross Schmidt boundary. So this is done by Schmidt and Morel. So Ross Schmidt is just like uh, like charm groups. So uh, if you have a point in the of co-dimension one. Then you reduce to the case of the of the of the integral local domain of the of dimension one, and uh, you apply normalization, and that's um, that's what is called the Ross-Schmidt boundary. And uh, theorem of Gila says that if two is invertible in X, then these two coincide. Does one need to choose some local parameter or something like this? I mean, this trivialization that you said. Oh, it doesn't which depend on which the tri trivialization. I mean, trivialization of normal one or something like this. No, uh, not really. I mean, in Gilles' paper, he did. Uh, I mean, he, he made choices everywhere, but mm -hmm. uh, in our joint work with uh, here, we avoid this just by choosing this because we have a dualizing complex, and um, so this one dimensional uh, vector space k of small k x. If we twist everywhere with proof by these, then th then um, this Rost Schmidt uh, thing becomes canonical, and that's what um, why we need this dualizing complex because it's it gives exactly this uh, input. Okay, and do do you, this k over k x? Uh, you said that it was a rank one vector. I mean, dimension one vector space, right? Yes. Is it kind of canonical? I mean, does uh, it canonically yes. Yes. depend on K? Yes, okay. because um, so you, you, you have, um, you can write down small X into, into big X, that's the inclusion. Yeah. And uh, this map is always essentially a finite type. And yeah. for any essentially a finite type morphism, you can define upper shriek. So you can define this uh, upper shriek of K, so this yeah. defines uh, this guy up to a shift, but uh, you, you you just to need to uh, get rid of the twi the shift to get this this space. So this is canonical from a, from K. Okay, so it somehow has inside of it this relative how it is called relative yeah. tangent one or something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Somehow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Right. So basically, what we have done is to avoid the, the choices that uh, Gila has made. And uh, the, these two ways of defining the boundary maps are so they, co they coincide. And uh, for this, we can also pass to this I infinity and we can sheafify it. So this gives us a complex of sheaves. So this is a complex of, uh, of the, the risky sheaves. But in, in fact, uh, real etal sheaves because these guys are uh, real etal sheaves. So it's um, the direct sum of uh, I infinity sheaves of K of X twisted by this K um, of small K X for co dimension and points in X and um, to the, the direct sum for co dimension n plus one points, et cetera. So this is a bounded complex of uh, sheaves on X. So now the story is, uh, becomes like this. So you have sheaves on X, which are given by twisted bit sheaf. And uh, so the generalization of the Jacobson's theorem says that this corresponds to twisted uh, constant sheaves on XR. Right, and um, what we have seen is that you can you have a sheafified Gerson bit complex, and the natural question is to ask whether there's uh, an analog here on XR. 
Also, um, a related question is to ask whether there is an analog of Jacobson's theorem for dualizing objects. So here, this twisted, I mean, twisted constant sheets and locally constant objects. And here, the Gaussian grid complex, the analog of this here should be, um, should be um, uh, a candidate for dualizing object here on XR. And this is uh, exactly the, the ring results uh, of our work. So um, it turns out that um, the real et al duality on, on, on XR is quite similar to the Verklier duality on topological spaces. So uh, we can witness uh, this fact via the following purity results in D of XR. So first you have the uh, Poincaré duality, uh, which we proved. So it says that if F is a smooth morphism of relative dimension D, then uh, this FR upper star and FR upper shriek. Uh, oops, sorry. So this is, uh, here is um, the argument, and here is the argument, not the shift. So they di actually differ by uh, a, a locally constant sheaf uh, shifted by D. And this is exactly um, the, the, the locally constant sheaf associated to this um, invertible OX module given by the determinant of the tangent bundle of F. So this is uh, Poincaré duality. And also you have absolute purity. So this is uh, first due to Schreiderer, uh, but he stated this uh, locally and we gave a global uh, statement for this result. So uh, we take uh, Z and X to regular schemes and I from Z to X a closed immersion of constant dimension, that co dimension C. So in particular, I is a regular closed immersion and uh, you denote by n the normal bond of i and let f be a locally constant constructible sheaf on xr so this is a typical hypothesis for absolute purity and then we prove that um, i r upper shriek of f so this is almost i r upper star of f but they differ actually by also by this locally constant sheaf that twisted by the inverse of the determinant of n and shifted by minus c. So uh, actually Scheider's theorem is um, the statum for, uh, for f, uh, the constant sheaf. And he also stated this just, um, just locally. But we, sh we discovered that the, the global term here should be uh, this twisted thing. Uh, right, so we have, um, Poincaré duality, which is also called relative purity and absolute purity here. And with these two, with these tools, we can um, now discuss the connival spectral sequence and the Poussin complex. So we assume that X is a regular excellent scheme and F is a locally constant uh, constructible sheet on XR. So uh, we have the carnival spectral sequence. So this is um, due to Grothendieck at the first place and later developed by Bloch Ogas um, uh, in a famous paper. And then in the real et al uh, context, um, it's studied by Scheiderer. So the carnival spectral sequence is basically a consequence of the localization uh, sequence uh, in cohomology. So this is a spectral sequence with E1 terms E1 PQ equals at the Dirac sum for co-dimension P uh, points in X. So here the co-dimension is the canonical um, co-dimension function associated to X because X is a regular scheme. So there's a canonical co-dimension function on it. And um, the E1 terms are Dirac sums for um, the local cohomology, HPQ uh, supported on at XR, small XR of the big XR with values in F. So the spectral sequence converges to um, the P plus Q's cohomology group of F uh, of XR F. And because can, X is, yes. Can you say what is small XR? 
Um, I mean, how, how do you choose uh, ordering? So, or? uh, because small x is a point of x, yeah. and uh, xr is, is the associated real spectrum. Ah, okay, so it is not okay. a point, it is rather... Okay. Exactly, yeah. but uh, you can define this as... Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, there's a no canonical problem. inclusion from small xr to big xr, because yes. uh, the real spectrum de depends from totally on the scheme. Yes. And uh, right, but still it's, it's a cohomology supported at xr, small xr, like this. And right, and because x is regular, so this uh, spectral sequence degenerates at e2. So, and uh, right, and by absolute purity, you can compute this E1 page. So the E1 page uh, can be computed as the Kuzan complex like this. So you take the direct sum over co-dimension zero points of X of, um, uh, of the global sections of uh, F of omega small X over big X to the sum over co-dimension point, one point of the, of the same thing. So here, uh, omega small x over big x. So we define this to be the determinant of the normal bundle of the inclusion of x into, uh, into, into the local ring, into the spectrum of the, of the local ring. So this is, uh, yes. Yeah. Should there be some kind of minus one on the, Second direct sum. Uh, why is that? Yeah, I mean, like for I don't know Gerson complex for K theory, something like this, where it starts from K n goes to K n minus one, K n minus two, and so on. We are residuals. Or is it some different thing? Mm, I don't think so. I think here it's just H zero everywhere. No, I mean it is a, uh, this is H zero, but should it be the say F minus one? I mean minus one and say we what's key notation or something like that. Mm. Oh, you don't need it because it was a locally constant shift, probably. Yeah, probably that's that's the reason. Yeah, I mean that's if you look at the usual Gerson complex in say K theory, you have K n goes to K n minus one, K n minus two, and so on. Yeah, but okay. This is probably yeah. because of this locally constant condition. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. So this uh, omega small x over big x is the determinant of the normal bundle of the inclusion of x into the local ring. So, and uh, each term is a, is a twisted, uh, of f twisted by this thing, this uh, uh, invertible O x uh, module. And you can shiftify this uh, Kuzan complex. And this shows that, um, so if X is regular excellent and uh, this F is locally constant constructible sheet on XR, then you get a canonical resolution of F by uh, a cyclic sheet like this. So you take the direct sum of the uh, co-dimension zero point if R XR lower star of F twisted by omega small x over big x to the direct sum over uh, co-dimension one points of the same thing. So here R x R is, um, uh, is just the inclusion of small x R into big, big x R. So, um, so this, each term of this just looks like a sky square per sheet. But uh, not quite so because small XR need not be uh, discrete. But that's a kind of spirit um, in this. So if X is regular, 
excellent and f is locally constant uh, constructible, then this is the resolution of f. Sorry, one, so, one more question on that stuff. Yes, uh, yes. Can you say what is the real spectrum of A1 minus zero? Um, I know there, there's a description of the real spectrum of uh, the, the, the affine line over the real numbers. Yeah, what is that? So, uh, the real spectrum of this guy is a topological space given by things like that. So you have, first you have two points, minus infinity plus infinity, and you have all the real numbers. And you have, yeah. uh, for each real number, the A, there are two numbers, A minus and A plus. And yeah. the topology of this space is given by, so the opens are generated by um, the closing for intervals of the form A minus B plus. So do, do you see what this thing is? Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. it turns out that this space is homeomorphic. Is that true? No, sorry. So the close points of uh, this space is homeomorphic to the unit segment. So the zero, in, zero one interval. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you, and so if you, if you take yeah. away the points. Yeah. yeah. And it is up to homotopy equivalence are two points and locally constant two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two sections. Okay. But, uh, over general fields, it should be difficult. Does it commute in some sense with products? I mean, if I take our mm -hmm. Z, this thing, and I mean, GM if you take Z. the Cartesian product in the category yeah. of topological spaces, I think it's not true. Not true. Okay. Yeah. Thank it's, you. It's, a, it's a weird thing. Just like there's a risky spectrum, it's mm -hmm. yeah, uh, right. Thanks. So, um, right. So, based on this, we're trying to go so construct uh, a candidate for the for the question marks um, to be a complex of similar form. So, the complex before was for x regular. And now we try to do this for singular schemes. So this uh, drives us to uh, define the following things. So uh, we first have the twisted residue. So we take R to be a discrete valuation ring uh, with fraction field F and M the maximum ideal. And small k is the, the, the residue field. And we let H to be a free R module of rank one. Then the twisted residue map is a map from uh, CFR, so the ring of continuous functions from FR with values in uh, Z uh, twisted by HF to uh, the ring of continuous functions from small kr to uh, the, the constant shift Z twisted by HK tensored with the dual of uh, M over M square. So this twisted residue is a, is a twisted variant of the sign homomorphism. Now the second ingredient is a twisted transfer. So if L over F is a finite field extension, and uh, if H is a one dimensional F vector space, then we can define uh, the tra a twisted transfer map as a map from the ring of continuous functions from LR, um, with values in Z twisted by harm uh, F linear mass maps from L to H to the ring of uh, continuous functions from uh, FR to uh, Z twisted by H. And this map is defined using the trace form um, uh, from L to uh, the, the harm uh, of F linear maps from L to F. So uh, with, with these two ingredients, we are ready to define the Gerstin complex uh, as follows. So if X is a possibly singular scheme, and if K, big K is a dualizing complex on X, 
then we obtain a complex uh, of abelian groups, C, X, R, K, like this. So we take the direct sum uh, for co-dimension M points uh, over big X of um, the ring of continuous functions over K, X, R, and we look at uh, Z twisted by K of small K, X. And you go to the sum of uh, over the co-dimension M plus one points on X, of the same thing. So this is a bounded complex of Abelian groups. So we can show that this uh, is actually a complex. Uh, so this means that um, the, the if you compose the boundary maps twice, it's zero. So we show that um, this is a complex by just by comparing it to the width case, because we already know that in the width case it's a complex. So uh, it's also true in, in this case here. And we can shiftify this uh, complex of abelian groups over this uh, the space XR. Um, and we obtain a, a complex, this uh, underlying C, XRK, which is a bounded um, complex of sheaves of abelian groups on XR. So it, it looks like this. So you take the dark sum of uh, over points of co-dimension M and uh, each term looks like uh, our XR lower star of this set twisted by K of small KX. And you go to the direct sum over co-dimension M plus one points and et cetera, and it continues. So it's a complex of sheaths uh, of abelian groups uh, on XR like this. So here I XR is a canonical map from small XR to big XR. And uh, each term just looks like skyscraper sheets. So here comes uh, the main theorem of, um, of our joint work with Han Qi. So the first is, um, is the case where uh, X is regular. So if X is a, an excellent regular scheme and L is an invertible OX module. So for regular schemes, the, the dualizing complexes are nothing but invertible OX modules up to a shift. So in this case, uh, we know that uh, the C of XR L, this is nothing but um, the locally constant sheet of Z twisted by L. So that's the regular case. And theorem B says that this complex uh, underlying C XRK, this is preserved by the functor F upper shrink. So just remember that um, in these incoherent duality as well as uh, in et al or homotopic duality, um, the functor F upper shrink always preserves dualizing objects. So uh, we show that this complex is preserved by F upper shrink, which uh, means that if X and Y are excellent schemes and F from X to Y is a quasi-projective morphism, and then there is a canonical isomorphism of the complexes underlying C, uh, XR, F upper shrink of K. So this is isomorphic to FR upper shrink on the C underlying uh, uh, y r k so this inside the, the derived category of uh, of sheaves on uh, x r so this complex is preserved by f upper shrink and finally we show that if x is excellent any ex excellent scheme then this uh, complex underlying c uh, x r k uh, if k is a dualizing complex on x so this is an element in the direct category of uh, sheaves and XR. And we show that this is actually a dualizing complex, a dualizing object in this category, uh, which means that uh, this complex is first constructible. So it lives in BC of XR, but also you have bi-duality. So the, the, the end of functor DK, which is uh, our home, have something with values in this complex under line C, have uh, this uh, constructible subcategory. This satisfies DK composed with DK's identity. So the, uh, 
so you actually have this bi-duality uh, for this uh, on the INC. So it says that this is a dualizing object. So as a consequence, um, we show that the map that uh, sends uh, K to this complex underlying C, X, R, K, this gives rise to a map from dualizing complexes over X to dualizing objects uh, in the direct category of X, R. So this somehow builds a bridge between coherent duality here and, uh, and the real etal duality here. So let me say some words uh, about the proof. So for the A, it's a regular case. So uh, what we need to do is to compare this uh, underlying CXRL with a Kuzan complex. And uh, we use a, a, actually a, a result of Jacobson that compares um, the two. And for, for the theorem B, so this theorem B says that it's compatible with F upper shrink. So we can actually assume that F is either a closed immersion or smooth. So if F is a closed immersion, then uh, we are basically reduced to the VIT case. And uh, in the paper, we proved a Devisage type result. So if F is a closed immersion, then F upper streak basically computes the, the cohomology with uh, support in, uh, in Z. And uh, the second case, if F is smooth, then we use uh, Poincaré duality and A. So uh, basically, uh, if F is smooth, then every fiber of F is smooth and in particular regular. So you, you, you get, uh, for every point, you get a resolution given by this Cousin complex. And you, if you take the sum, you get a total complex of a double complex. And what we can do is to compare this CXR F upper star K with the cultural complex of this uh, double complex. And uh, the interesting point is this point C, which is uh, for me not quite trivial. So uh, in order to show that this complex is constructible, um, what we do is to use A, B and the theorem induction. So this is because uh, we assume that every scheme is excellent. So uh, for excellent schemes, um, they have a non-empty uh, open subscheme, which is regular. And we apply this at the localization um, and uh, we use A and B and the theory induction to, uh, uh, to show that this is constructible. And to show bi-duality, um, we uh, actually reduced to show that uh, if for any morphism f from y to x, which is projective with y regular, you have this thing here. So you only to need, show, need to show the biduality for the constant sheet and uh, apply it to this f upper shriek of this uh, line c thing. So this uh, uses resolution of singularities and uh, lemma due to Cezinski and degrees. And to, in order to pr prove this, um, we exactly need to apply A and B uh, because B says that you can move this F upper shriek here inside. So you have underlying CXR of F upper shriek of K, but uh, here, um, uh, right here, you get underlying C Y R of uh, F upper shriek of A of K, but here Y is regular, so you apply, apply A. And uh, this anyway, this thing becomes a locally constant thing, and uh, and from which we did deduce the biduality um, quite easily. So uh, to finish the talk, I want to talk about some uh, relations with uh, topology. So the first thing is um, the, the computation of hyperpohomology of these complex of sheaves. So uh, there are actually isomorphisms between the three things. So first you have the hyperpohomology of this underlying C of X uh, with uh, 
this uh, I infinity G and K. And second thing is the R minus R uh, hypercohomology of this underlying C, XRK. And uh, the third thing is just um, the cohomology of this non sheafified version of this, um, of this complex C, XRK. So um, the first isomorphism is a counterpart of Jacobson's theorem uh, for complexes. So basically, you just need to check this uh, isomorphism uh, pointwise. And the second thing is just because uh, this underlying CXRK is a complex of acyclic uh, sheets. Uh, right. And uh, what this underlying C uh, complex do is um, actually its hypercohomology groups are related to Borel Moore homology. So uh, if X, F is a morphism from X to spec R is quasi projective. So if X is a quasi projective uh, scheme over uh, the field of real numbers, and if L is an invertible OX module, then the hypercohomology of this underlying C thing uh, tensored with L is isomorphic to uh, the Boron Moore homology of uh, the real points of X with values uh, in uh, L of R. So this is the associated real uh, line bundle on XR. And uh, this thing is the topological Boron Moore homology. And if we replace the field of real numbers by any a real closed field, then uh, the right hand side becomes um, Bell's uh, semi algebraic uh, Borel Moore homology. So, uh, yeah, this is what I would like to talk about for this talk. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. So, I have several questions. Uh, the first one is on the last slide. When you uh, yes. talk yeah, about this hypercohomology, uh, are these guys also acyclic? I mean, for the first complex, when you have this uh, I infinity. No, no, it's it's a bit sheaf. I mean, the I infinity, I infinity is sheaf. So it's a complex of these things. I mean, uh, this is a complex of this direct, I mean, a kind of skyscraper guys, right? Um, no. The thing on XR is, but uh, this is the Zariski sheet. I mean, this is the Zariski sheet given by I infinity thing. So, ah, um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And the other question was uh, when you say that this, uh, when you say that you have this uh, map which takes a dualizing sheet, a dualizing complex in the sense of coherent duality to the dualizing object in that um, real topology. And, I mean, yes. in this real adult tense. And uh, the last category, as you said, uh, DX of R is the same as DA1 with row inverted, right? Yes. And yes. Uh, can one see somehow what object does it, does it give? I mean, you have just a dualizing complex over X. Can you see somehow what object in the DA1 do you get? I mean, without passing through this identification by Tom Bachman, somehow more explicitly. No? I don't really know because uh, the, the things are here are, are really touches and uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. 